most common cancer in Singapore men. And unfortunately also, majority have no symptoms, they feel fine. The only way they found out is that the blood test they take is higher. What are the risk factors for prostate cancer for men? Usually, if the father or the uncle on the, on the parent's side have cancer, so the gene may be passed down from upper generation down. We also found out recently in the in the US and Europe that even the mother can pass down a prostate cancer gene, even though she's female and no prostate. So now we need to look for both sides of mother and father side, who has cancer, breast cancer, and also prostate cancer. The other risk factor for prostate cancer is when you when we have uh, too much uh, fat in the diet or obesity. And some racial groups like African Americans have the highest in the world. Uh, the other last thing is environment. We are not sure how it affects, but there was a study that looked at Japanese men who was born in Japan. Then their son is born in Japan but moved to Hawaii, and the son gave birth to the grandson. So when they move more to Japanese, they get more and more cancer, even though it's the same genetic line. Don't know whether it's McDonald's or pizza, but we know that when they move, even in the same family, there's higher cancer when they move from one country to another. Okay? But we don't really know which food type, but we know environmental changes. So prostate cancer, unfortunately for most men, they have no symptoms. Only if you do a blood test, then we can find out there's a high uh, blood test called PSA. Of course, there are a few patients who have uh, symptoms. Some patients have difficulty passing urine, blood in the urine, and waking up at night to pass urine. It is normal to maybe wake up once, but more than once is not normal. Many men think that waking up two, three times because of aging is not true. It may be because the prostate is blocking the urine flow, and then uh, they can't empty the bladder, or they have cancer or other reasons. So it doesn't mean that when we grow older, men must wake up a few times. That's not true. Sometimes urine frequency can cause that uh, symptoms too of prostate cancer. If it becomes stage four, when the cancer st spread to the bones, you have back pain and bone pain and affect the kidney function also. And the worst thing is when the cancer spread to the uh, bone, it can cause uh, paralysis and you, can, you won't be walking anymore if it spread to the spine. So it's good to find out early whether there's prostate cancer. What do doctors do when we see the man in the clinic? First, we put a finger into the backside area to check and feel the prostate because you know the prostate is just below the bladder. We do the blood test called PSA and decide to offer a biopsy of prostate when needed. Why do we put a finger into the rectum? That's because if you imagine a prostate as a watermelon, 95%, 90 over percent of the cancer is in the skin of the watermelon. It's not in the meat. It's not in the flesh of the watermelon, most of it on the skin. We call it peripheral zone. That's why when we put a finger, we can feel it. But remember, when we put a finger, we can only feel one part of the watermelon, right? We cannot feel all around. Not possible, right? Yeah. So we can only feel a part. So it doesn't mean our finger is the best thing. If our finger feels something, it's no good. But if our finger don't feel anything, it doesn't mean nothing, everything is all right. You still need to do a blood test which is why we need to do both the finger test and the blood test. All right? Okay? So this is the PSA. The blood test in, the, in Singapore, we know that PSA more than four, we should do a biopsy. That's because out of every four men, one has cancer and three don't have. So the blood test, we will look at this value, of PSA of four. Do you all know her? You know Angelina Jolie? The, she came into the Times, uh, for those of you who are not aware, she came to the front page of this because she took out her, both her breasts when it's completely normal. That's because her family history has cancers in the ovary and they, they found a gene that can, she may have it. So she just said, I just take out the both. Uh, many women did the same thing, many women didn't. So it became a controversy. That's because of a gene that they found in her, gene that can be passed from family to family. 
So, but if you look at the cancers with inheritance, that means passed from family to family, you look at breast cancer, it's 9%, right? How about prostate? It's about the same. So does it mean if your father has prostate cancer, you must quickly go and take out the prostate? <clears throat> so that's a danger for us if we think the same way. So now uh, the urology community is discussing what's the best way to do it. So if you have a um, mother or mother's side who has breast cancer and father's side who has a prostate cancer or breast cancer, do talk to the urologist to see whether we need to screen you for prostate cancer. Okay? So it's both men and women's side. In the past, we think it's only all the men's side. There's, so it's women's side have to think about it as well. In fact, what they think is that this gene called BRCA2 is found in 1 in 20 prostate cancer, even though it's the breast cancer gene, which can be passed down from the mother to the son. All right? So this is something to discuss, um, a message that I want to pass to you all. Okay, so prostate biopsy. Once we think that we need to take some things to the prostate cancer cell to see whether there's cancer, <clears throat> we usually need to put ultrasound into the backside to see the prostate and then take a needle. But almost no man like it, very uncomfortable. And sometimes we need to do repeatedly, right? I said. So how to reduce the chance? One of the ways is to do an MRI <clears throat> of the prostate and then what we do is call the fusion. The MRI that was done a few days ago, we fuse it with a software, with the ultrasound, and we see exactly where to go. For example, if you look at Singapore map, I think the cancer is in Topayo, Lorong 8, Block 156. Got such block, I don't know. So, when I see the map of ultrasound, I put the Singapore map over, my needle go direct to block 156 together. You can do that when you do MRI and fuse it. So that's our goal. We only want to go to the place where it's more accurate. In the past, when we have no MRI, is <clears throat> uh, we just hamtam anyhow, some in Topayo, some Lorong, Tampanese, Jurong, because we can't see. In the past, it's ultrasound, we can't see anything, as well as MRI. So if you do have a <clears throat> prostate biopsy, do check whether you need the MRI prostate first because you want to be more, uh, locate the exact place you want to take. Okay? Ken? How do we do it? So everyone who do this MRI and ultrasound, uh, fusion biopsy, goes to the MRI machine first. Top left-hand corner is the MRI machine. The doctor will look at the MRI image. This is what a prostate looks like and put a red dot, I mean not red color, but this is what I mean. They say this is the place, this grayish part is where I want you to target. So a few days later, bottom left hand, patient come in for the ultrasound, then they include the image of MRI on top with the ultrasound, fuse it, then there's this spot I need to hit. So this is more accurate. So this is one way we hope that uh, we don't have to do so many times of the prostate biopsy unnecessarily. So this is called MRI ultrasound, fusion biopsy. Okay? Any questions? Quite clear? So that's how we do, use MRI first. So the last uh, question I want to answer is, <clears throat> prostate cancer, when we do operation, you can cause erection problem and can cause urine leak. And some men have to wear diapers for the rest of their life because you remove the stopper of the prostate and then there's a gap, right? When we do a repair of the, of the gap, some patients actually need diapers for a long, long time. And then because the nerve for erection is stuck to the prostate, then they don't get erection anymore. Okay, so these are the two major problems when we do surgery. So can a good robot surgery prevent such thing and say, wow, do robot expensive machine, right? Then shouldn't have so no side effect. Lah. Yeah. But the answer is, Unfortunately, no. So it does, because it doesn't depend actually on the machine, it depends on the surgeon doing it. And uh, doesn't mean the newest technique can make sure there's no infection, uh, no uh, side effect. But the good thing is side effect can be reduced if the surgeon knows how to do a nerve sparing prostate cancer surgery, meaning we peel off the nerve from the prostate. So if you imagine the same watermelon as the prostate, 
the nerve for erection is like scotch tape stuck to it. So the job of a good surgeon is to peel it off without uh, taking cancer along. You only peel the scotch tape out, leave in the body, remove the whole watermelon. Okay? No need. Remember, if you see a doctor who does it, who has a machine but don't know what to do, please uh, go to another clinic. <laughs> yeah. Because every surgeon, okay, I should, can see this, right? Uh, I've seen the uh, uh, Parkway Hospital put every doctor inside and say, oh, they have robotic surgeon before, for example, because they have the machine. Or some advertisement will say, oh, they know how to do it because they bought the newest thing in, in, uh, where they have. So just check, make sure you know uh, whether this person just buy it for the sake of buying or they actually know how to use it. That's the key. All right? So have, have you seen any video of the uh, robotic surgery? No. Uh. Can I show you why the robot uh, is something useful? May I show some YouTube? We are. Can you all hear? Okay, so this is what it looks like. This is actually an a example of how the robot is doing in the body. This is a precision of how the robot can do. That's the robot. This is the advantage of robot surgery, um, which can be done, okay? So, in summary, these are the few questions uh, I was talking about. For kidney cancer, I asked uh, what are the symptoms for kidney cancer? Usually none. Uh, who is suitable for robotic surgery? The same robot that's used. Uh, for small kidney tumour, we use a precise way of cutting and then stitch it up exactly with the same robot that you saw. For bladder cancer, what are the symptoms of bladder cancer? Usually none, but some patients do have blood in the urine. Whether you can see it or you can't see it, there's still blood in the urine. Other patients may come with urine problem, as if they have a urine tract infection, like urgent, always get urgent, always look for toilet, or frequently looking for toilet. Then for bladder cancer, we were asking why is the treatment in the bladder important? The main aim is to reduce the chance cancer will come back so that you don't get cancer coming back again. For prostate cancer, every man wants to reduce the number of times they get a biopsy and one of the ways to avoid unnecessary multiple biopsies is first do an MRI scan so that we can find where to target it and then do the biopsy together with an MRI that fills with our ultrasound image. Then the last thing we ask is that can a robot surgery prevent urine leak or erection problem? Uh, you saw how precise the robot can be used, uh, but the answer is no. It doesn't mean that using robot, there will be no side effect. It just reduces it. But make sure you find, uh, um, always go for a second opinion. I tell my patients, all oh, go for a second opinion, check out the different doctors who can uh, treat the cancer and then make a decision after that. All right? And... Thank you very much.